Savvy Central Radio, drawing out the best from our guest with your host, Christina Nitschman. Everybody's home is a place for like-minded people who love their pets and want fashionable, quality home furnishings for them. Whether looking to add a little flair to your apartment or redesign a room in your home, everything in their collection is chosen for your pet's comfort and your style. Not only will you add more love and style to your home, you will help feed an animal caught in the crossfire of domestic violence through their Everybody's Pet Project initiative. Find out more by visiting everybodyshome.com or call 212-614-3239. Get ready and start your engines for our fourth annual Aviation Month, where nine aviation businesses share their gifts and wisdom. Our guest today is Victoria Zyko, a commercial pilot in aviation insurance. Her dog Turbo is a 20-pound mix. Turbo the Flying Dog is an aviation-themed book series based off the real-life adventures of author Victoria Zyko's dog, Turbo. In December 2012, Zyko, a commercial pilot, and her pilot husband flew from their home in Maryland to West Virginia to adopt a puppy from a local rescue. Turbo was the only appropriate name for the pup who took to flying right from the beginning. Find out more about Turbo and the Flying Dog book series at TurboTheFlyingDog.com. Hi, Victoria. Welcome to Savvy Central Radio. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very excited. I'm um, happy to be here and looking forward to chatting with you some more. Oh, me too, girl. I just recently met you on Facebook. You're doing some really cool stuff. We, I'm happy to have you out also for our fourth annual Aviation Month. And you are not only a woman pilot, but you have a really cool, awesome dog named Turbo who flies around the country with you. Tell us about your path, how you came to meeting Turbo, and how you came to writing your lighthearted aviation children's book series and flying about the nation together. Oh, it's, it's just a fun story. You know how people have that like clock that's ticking that women are ready to have a baby mm -hmm. I had that but for a dog I was like I need a dog in my life I want a puppy um, my husband and I are both pilots I'm a commercial pilot I actually outrank him I like to say that uh, <laughs> aviation's always been in my life and encouraged growing up and when we found Turbo on Pet Finder, he was actually in West Virginia, and it would have been probably a four, four and a half hour drive to pick him up. Wow. And so we decided instead of driving all that way, we were going to pick him up in the airplane. Oh, wow. And that's where Turbo got his start. He was only six weeks old, and he has been flying with us ever since. Mm. And I can totally relate to you, Victoria. I'm a student pilot. My um, partner is an actual commercial pilot. Um, but for years, as long, uh, as long as I've been a, a child, I've always wanted to have my own dog when I moved out. I, I had them growing up. And when I moved out, I just happened to be in situations in New York City where they weren't allowing pets. And this is the first time ever where I'm in a building that does allow pets. But I was traveling so much that it wasn't a possibility. But this year, I'm putting it on my calendar that I'm going to a kennel or a shelter to pick up my very first dog as an adult. Yay, adult Yay. dog. <laughs> <laughs> so excited, so excited. So what were you hoping when you brought out your book series uh, on Turbo the Flying Dog, and what were you hoping to attract and to uh, get out there as far as your message? You know, Turbo the Flying Dog kind of came about as ac on accident. I, I had always loved writing little children's books for kids I babysat when I was in high school and such. And my friend and I got talking about how people loved seeing where Turbo was going. You know, we brought him everywhere with us that we could. We have a small plane, so it was really, you know, helpful. And whenever we did trips, we didn't like to leave him behind. He's a member of our family. And people got so so excited seeing these pictures of Turbo flying everywhere and Turbo on the wing, Turbo wearing his headset in the airplane that we're like, this, this is a great way to encourage children to, you know, reach for their dreams, especially if it's in aviation. Turbo's story is just, you know, inspirational for those kids. Mm -hmm. And besides being a book series, they can see the real life Turbo's adventures. 
they can see what we do with him and what you know I've done with my life and my aviation career so it's not just the book that it's inspirational it's the actual people behind the book that can be inspirational to these children as well mm. I'm, I'm curious what brought you to the world of aviation Oh, that's a fun story. I blame my father. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, we always went to the world's largest air show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Ooh. Yeah, it's an amazing experience. I highly recommend it. If you don't like planes before you go, you definitely will when you leave. It's it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And my dad got his inspiration from his father. So um, both my grandparents were pilots. I actually have a great uncle who was a World War II ace. Mm. So it's it's always been in the family. It's always been something I wanted to do, and I had never been discouraged from doing it in my family. They're like, "Go, girl!" You know. <laughs> that is so cool. I wish my my family had had that attitude. We kind of had an idea in our family that women do this and men do that, or boys do this and girls do that. And I think a lot of people grow up with that. So it's great to have Turbo the Flying Dog and you to really inspire people that hey, there is a different route if you're interested. Oh, for sure. You know, there's only 6% of pilots are women, mm -hmm. and even the smaller percentage that are, you know, commercial or ATP airline transport pilots. And I don't know if I would have become a pilot if it wasn't for someone in my family being a pilot. And mm -hmm. I asked a lot of other girls I know, and they all learned about aviation and the fact that hey you can fly planes for fun it doesn't have to be for a living and they all learned about it from their fathers someone like an uncle maybe a guy they were dating they all mm -hmm. learned it from someone else that they knew so if I didn't know my family and didn't know you know a pilot I don't know if I would have ever considered you know entering in a career of aviation because it was never encouraged in school. I never saw posters, hey, girls, become a pilot, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can totally relate. I, I came to it through a totally different realm in that I was totally petrified of flying, and I made it my goal in 2006. I was going to conquer the field. Oh, so I actually, yeah, I went on yeah. took a flight, and that I, I was petrified through the first 15 minutes, wanted to jump out the window. And <laughs> then as I had nowhere else to go but through the fear, it was amazing. A peace came over me. I was never more present in my entire life as I was at that moment. And I was like, this rocks. I came back down. I was like, okay, where do I sign up? You know, it was amazing. I love hearing stories like that. That makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking now, I'm sure some people will have ideas like I have a dog or I fly, but you know, I don't think it's a good idea to bring a dog up. How did Turbo take the flying? Was it really tough for him to get used to it? How did that work out? I'm a big planner. When we first got Turbo or we're looking at rescuing a dog, I said, okay, first we're going to introduce him to the airport and we'll just taxi around, you know, drive the plane around the airport with him in it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll slowly take him up, do a takeoff and a landing. If that works out, we'll do, you know, a 20-minute trip. And if that works out, we'll do an hour and we'll slowly work him up so this little puppy isn't just scarred for life. Well, because of how far away he was and the fact that we decided to fly to pick him up, mm -hmm. we kind of just shoved him right into an hour-long flight from the get-go, completely threw all my plans out the door. And I made sure I put little cotton balls in his ears. He didn't have his own headset yet. So he had little cotton balls in his ears. I put a towel on my lap in case there was an accident. I held on to him, kept him in my lap the whole time. I had my husband fly the airplane so I could concentrate on the puppy if he freaked out. Well, go figure, all my planning, he just fell right asleep. And wow. when we landed, he was still sleeping. I actually thought I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can I poke the puppy? Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. When I talk to Pilots and Paws, I'm, I'm quite sure you've heard of them, right? Yes, of course. Amazing organization. I love them. And they came on last year. And, and that was my first question to them because I was bothered. And I'm sure a lot of people immediately think, oh, no, dogs, so dangerous in cockpit. And they said, no, we pick up rescues all the time, and they generally just fall straight asleep. Yeah, I think something about the noise and the vibration just lulls them to sleep. Turbo gets excited when he comes to the airport now. We drive oh. up. He starts yapping, ready to get out of the car. He hops right up on the wing. He hops right up into his seat. And the second we put his headset on, he falls asleep because he knows he's just going to fall asleep and wake up somewhere new. No, not all dogs 
Mm -hmm. you know, are like that. You know, some love car rides, some don't. So there's definitely, if you're worried about it, I would make sure mm -hmm. if you're flying on your own, don't do it solo. Make sure someone else is there to watch the dog, maybe put them in a cage with their favorite blanket, something like that. But um, Turbo has never had an issue. He did throw up once, but that's mm -hmm. because someone fed him something he shouldn't eat Aww. before we left. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and you mentioned something very smart with your planning. I mean, it didn't work out for Turbo, but you said you were going to take them out just taxi to start out and then take them out and go around the pattern land. And that sounds really cool because when I first went, I went for a, I think, 15, no, no, I think it was about a half hour flight and I was mm -hmm. petrified. But I also got super, super nauseated. So I couldn't really fly effectively for many lessons because... I was so nauseated, I, I couldn't concentrate on the flight. Uh, so what I, I did is I did what you did is I would go up for five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, and just build it bit by bit. And I'm 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 sure that would work for an animal too if you wanted to bring them on extended journeys going forward. Exactly. You know, you don't want to. I don't think it would have been beneficial to you if someone locked you in a flying plane for an hour. Yeah. You know, that feeling nauseous, feeling sick, it's not going to be a memorable, enjoyable experience. So if I were to lock a dog in a loud, noisy plane that's new to him for an hour and he didn't enjoy the experience, what do you think is going to happen next time he gets to that plane? So yeah. I would definitely recommend doing it in intervals, but as, you know, with Turbo, it, it was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so now you're making circuits around the nation, uh, promoting your book series and bringing Turbo along for the ride. Uh, what has been the response to the book and to Turbo as, he, as you've been making your circuits and such? It's been so exciting. We funded the books through a Kickstarter, and all our advertising was done during through social media, and most of it was through fellow pilots just spreading the word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And what is so amazing about the aviation community in the United States is how most of us are just so giving and willing to help one another out. You know, you and I met through a fellow friend on Facebook mm -hmm. that shared the love of aviation, and everyone's just so willing to be like, oh, that's a wonderful idea. Let me share it. Or I might know this person who will help you. And that's, that's been an amazing response in helping us get the word out. And then when we're actually there, um, we did, we do these events called Pause and Planes Days. And mm -hmm. we'll go to an airport or a school and teach children about aviation. And we sell books there too. But, you know, the purpose is get the children to meet this flying dog uh, learn different parts of aviation. They'll have crafts and stuff like that. And we had a little boy this past weekend who was terrified of Turbo. Mm. Terrified of him. By the end of the day, he was crying because Turbo had to leave. Aww. <laughs> So, you know, it's the, my favorite part, you know, besides meeting new interesting people, you know, through the advertising of this book is actually, you know, seeing these children's reactions when they're like, that dog flies in airplanes? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's fabulous. And you're so right about the aviation community being super generous. I mean, we've been in some times where we got stuck. Uh, my pilot, pilot friend and I and my partner have flown around the nation. We've flown 31 states. Our goal is to meet all 50 states. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's been some times where, you know, we got to the airport and all the gas trucks were gone and we're stuck. And, and we call the airport manager and we've gotten help to get us to another airport or something or the weather got funky and someone said they'll put you up in their house. It's just, it's amazing how giving uh, and people look out for each other. It's really true. Yes, I hope that never changes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, because, you know, after 9-11, uh, things got a little funky with, you know, mm -hmm. security beefing up, and then I thought that maybe pilots would be the same, and really they're not. It's the same kind of atmosphere. It's like the airport property might be a little bit more guarded, but the people it's themselves flying are really gracious. Exactly. It becomes almost like a little family. Yep, absolutely. And so from flying around with Turbo around the United States and all the wonderful people and children you've met, what are some of the greatest takeaway or lessons you've gained from all these experiences? I am just so incredibly humbled. And sometimes I get really hard on myself. Um, I've been flying. I started flying when I was 16, but then I didn't really become a pilot till I was, oh, geez, 21 I think, and it's been a very long road, and I don't have many hours, um, as I should be for how long have I've been flying, and I don't have tons of ratings, and I wish I was a flight instructor by now, and I've had a lot of ups and downs, and instead of being hard on myself, 
I've learned that sharing my experiences with others, um, sharing those lows in my training where I should have been farther than I um, should have been, and just sharing that with others has been very, I don't know, healing. Like, I don't care that my past in aviation wasn't as straight and easy and uphill, I mean downhill as I wanted it to be. You know, I'm glad I still struggle to become the best pilot I want to be, and I'm glad, you know, it's not an easy route because mm -hmm. I can share that with others, mm -hmm. and I see, when I see children that are struggling with things too, I say, hey, you know what, I'm, I fly airplanes, and it's, it hasn't been easy, but I fly airplanes and, you know, and they get excited too. So I think that's what, it's just been a humbling process where I'm proud of myself versus being hard on myself. That's a really good way to look at it. And I think it's that way about life in general, whether it's flying in your life or the ups and downs of marriage or raising kids, there's going to be ups and downs. And you're not always going to be in the place you thought you were going to be in when you got there. But it's all perfect. You get there, you know, like I, I was just mentioning this to someone last week. We, we often think, hey, I want to get to that goal, whatever that goal is, I want to get to that idea of success. Well, what happens when you get there? It, it, life doesn't end. You just have another goal, another, you know, thing to reach out for. So it, it's great to look at it and think, okay, I'm not, I'm choosing not to look at it as failures, but just one step closer to my success. Exactly. Yeah. And so I'm curious, though, for anyone who's listening in who's either considering taking flying lessons or who maybe is struggling through flying lessons, what has been some of your difficult moments and how did you overcome those moments to keep on track with becoming a pilot? Well, one of the largest problems for people is financial. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot of money to become a pilot, but I can't think of any money more well spent because it's mm -hmm. just a confidence builder and it opens you up to a community of people that you wouldn't meet otherwise. So, uh, money aside, uh, the biggest problem I had was probably confidence and feeling like, hey, can I do this? You know, I'm, I'm not going to kill myself, and I, am I? And whenever I'm on the ground for a long period of time and, you know, wanting to fly again, mm -hmm. I, I have to get over that fear of that somehow I might fail. Mm -hmm. And the more I fly, the more that fear goes away. So I think it's the biggest confidence builder you can have. So when you learn to fly or start to fly, don't let those little things in the way discourage you because once you become that pilot that you're meant to be, you're going to have all the confidence you need to fly. Absolutely. I like that you're mentioning this because I think often people start on the road, they become, even they get their pilot license, you know, their private pilot license, but then because of other things coming up money-wise, it also takes staying current means you have to get up there on a every week or every other week basis and that's not always possible now what I've been out of the air for six months or so and you start to have that I'm not confident bit um, but what I find really cool and because we talked about this earlier the aviation community is so giving in our in our community and of our airport where we are in Republic Airport we have a number of pilots that get together and we help each other out in that hey if you have not been up for a while you come up and and we'll fly together in my airplane we'll split the cost of flying the airplane get a wet airplane you know split the cost and I'll fly with you because I'm current and and then we help keep each other current and, and stay in the air exactly yeah yeah, so it's a great idea. So what's your grand vision in the coming month for Turbo and the Flying Dog? Well, Turbo the Flying Dog has two books out right now. The first one is telling the true story of his adoption and where he overcomes his fear of flight because he had no idea what an airplane was. He was just Aww. a six, you know, six-week-old puppy. What the heck is an airplane? <laughs> and the second book is where he actually learns to fly and children get to learn about different parts of the airplanes like and they get to learn words like elevator and rudder and aileron and things like that. So definitely in the future will be book number three. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a big secret right now. Mm -hmm. But um, to before we get to that point, we're just getting the word out about Turbo the Flying Dog and Turbo Learns to Fly by doing Pause and Planes events. Mm -hmm. um, that's our biggest thing right now. We We've we do expos and like guests at fairs and stuff, but we have so much fun and just get so much out of actually getting in the community and 
hanging out with these children and we're not pushing the books. We're not like, hey, buy my book, buy my book, that's what you're here for. We're, hey, let's, let's introduce you to this flying dog. Hey, this is what you can do someday. You can be a pilot. You can reach for your dreams. And by the way, we have a book for sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, I also noticed you have some other cool stuff on your website. You have a, a coloring page where they can download free uh, two free coloring pages of Turbo. And you have a really, really cool T-shirt of Turbo yeah. the dog. Tell people more about that. Uh, well, yes, yeah, so we have the coloring pages. Right now we have the two pages that are from book one and book two up there to color. Those are available for free. He also has a Turbo's Fan Club, and if you join Turbo's Fan Club, you get a little certificate with your name saying you're a member, and you get discounts in the, your inbox for books or events or T-shirts coming up. And thanks to WinT Aviation, we actually now do have t-shirts, and it has Turbo and his sidekick, Olive, who is his flight instructor in book two. Mm -hmm. um, they have them flying an airplane on the front of the um, on the front of the shirt, and it's bright blue, and it's just happy, and it just screams aviation. So I'm so excited to have those now, and yeah. everyone's bugging me for sweatshirts, so hopefully we yeah. can get those rolling too. Yeah, with the winter coming up. And I love the back. It says bark, bark, and away, right? Bark, bark, and away. And that is something we do when we um, when we read to kids at these Paws and Planes events. We always make sure to do readings, and we get the children involved. And at least two or three times in each book, Turbo has this little phrase, which is bark, bark, and away. And when we have children say it, it's so much fun to have a group of, you know, 20 kids screaming this and getting so excited. And Turbo usually sleeps during the readings, and they always mm -hmm. manage to wake them up during that point. <laughs> Aww. And can I ask you, Victoria, as you came about doing this new journey in your life with Turbo, writing the books and all, has, has it been fearful for you to enter in this new territory? I had my doubts, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that this is fun and it's something I'm passionate about. So I'm not afraid of failing because I'm really enjoying the process and the encouragement and the response from people who have bought the book and met Turbo and has come to these events make mm -hmm. it worthwhile. If someone were telling me something negative, I'd be like, oh, well, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you don't like my book, I'm sorry. This is, has been a just life transforming to see these children smile just through a dog that goes in an airplane a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So with you now, with you being a pilot, commercial pilot and, and an author now and traveling around the world or actually is it around the world or is it just uh, really the United States? Well, if you want to count the world, Turbo has been to the Bahamas and Canada. Okay. That's the world. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, has there been any role models that have propelled you forward as you, you know, as you've done your journey? You know, I, I definitely look back at my father. You know, he was a pilot, and he always encouraged me to do it, and he never doubted me, and he never, he never was one of those people that would say, tell me to give up if it got too hard. He, he wouldn't let me give up on anything, actually. You know, nothing, nothing was not achievable, so I would definitely have to say my father, and Mm. Probably all the women who are in the 99s with me, it's the women's pilot organization that was formed by Amelia Earhart back in, what, 1929, mm -hmm. and all the people I've met, these, these other pilots that I can go to and bond with and talk with about what I'm doing and to feel their encouragement, no one's ever discouraged me. Mm, that's fabulous. Yes. And, th and that's what it should be about. I mean, we all have great gifts and talents, and there's no reason we can all not help inspire each other to reach for the dreams. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I, I sound so rainbowy and glowy today. Oh, it's good. <laughs> no, be it's happy juice. <laughs> <laughs> we need more rainbow and glowy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, where can folks find out more about Turbo and get their very own copy of Turbo, The Flying Dog, Turbo Learns to Fly? Those are your two books, and also your awesome new tea. Did I lose you? Hello? Okay. Yes. You do. All right. You can find everything at um, turbothefflyingdog.com, and his books are also so his books and his T-shirt are on turbothefflyingdog.com. You can find just the books on Amazon.com, and the first book is actually available as a Kindle edition as well. And then he is on Instagram, Twitter, and <laughs> Facebook. So. Yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming you also list all the upcoming places you'll be going to, so if anyone would like to visit and meet Turbo and you. 
We sure do. I encourage you to join the mailing list so you don't miss any updates, but everything is uh, listed on his website over at turbotheflyingdog.com. Fabulous. Well, I want to thank you again, Victoria, to come on and share your wonderful story here with Turbo the Dog and all that you've done together to create dreams for people and keep them going and, and never stop living their dreams. But before we head on out, are there any last words you'd like to leave with our audience? Ah, uh, bark, bark, and away. <laughs> Yay, bark, bark, and away. <laughs> well, thank you again, Victoria, for coming to Savvy Central Radio. Thank you. I had a great time. Everybody's Home is a place for like-minded people who love their pets and want fashionable, quality home furnishings for them. Whether looking to add a little flair to your apartment or redesign a room in your home, everything in their collection is chosen for your pet's comfort and your style. Not only will you add more love and style to your home, you will help feed an animal caught in the crossfire of domestic violence through their Everybody's Pet Project initiative. Find out more by visiting everybodyshome.com or call 212-614-3239. Savvy Central Radio is home to over 100,000 listeners per month globally and runs in syndication on eight AM and FM platforms, including iHeartRadio and six podcasting platforms. To find out more about our paid sponsorship opportunities or to become a guest and find out how we can help you get your message out to the world, call 718 area code 713-2289 or email at SavvyCentralRadio at gmail.com.